Here's a quick review on the Skyray King 7x XML2 Cree LED flashlight. It's got 7 XML version 2 T6 LEDs at the front with uh, an aluminum reflector. It's got a push button. It's just a momentary button. It's not a latching button. So it, when you press it, once you let go, that's when the action takes place. So if you let go, it goes to high, medium, low, and off. And at any point in time, if you hold this for three seconds, it'll go into strobe. Even if it's on, you can hold it for three seconds. So each one of these LEDs produces up to 1036 lumens or so. That's what the spec sheet says. So seven times a thousand, that's about 7,000 lumens max out of this. You can't get any more without overdriving the LEDs. And I don't think they overdrive the LEDs in this. It's got a round body, so it rolls around quite easily. And it has a pretty big tail, so it can stand like this and just light up the entire room. It takes four 18650s. Each of these put out about four amps, so you're gonna need pretty good quality cells. The cheap ones you find online won't really do. The handle has the bottom part. This just push it, unscrews out of it. That all just connects these in parallel. So it's a 1S4P setup. Here's the head. You unscrew this to get at the lens. That's just an aluminum ring. There's a glass lens on there. And it's a pretty thick glass lens. I don't think it's tempered or anything. Then you've got the silicone o-ring. Then you've got the aluminum reflector and LED assembly. And the circuit board is just press fitted in so you can just knock it out pretty easily. And there's also this o-ring here that helps with uh, thermal conduction from this head over to this body. There's an o-ring in the front, in the back, and for the front lens. So the thing's pretty much watertight, but the one weak point is the button, which uh, is just held on by, screwed on by this piece, and this is the button itself. There's no o-rings there, and the circuit board is just two wires to a momentary button. So unless you glue around the entire edge, push this button down into it, and let it set, it won't be waterproof until that's done. So that's pretty easy to do, just put some silicone glue in there, push it down, and let it uh, glue in place. It may come on by uh, a small accidental press, but you can always just unscrew this a quarter turn and then the flashlight won't be able to turn on anymore because this outer edge here is actually what touches the negative terminal of your battery like that. So if you unscrew it a quarter turn it'll just not touch and that'll be fine. The positive will stay in contact with this so it'll keep this from turning so easily because there's a bunch of springs on the bottom there. The actual control chip is not marked so I can't tell you what that is but it uses a uh, CEM9926A transistor to turn on and off the power and pulse it. So in medium and low you can actually see I think it has a sawtooth waveform and it's like over 400 Hertz. I can't tell exactly how many Hertz it is but it's pretty quick but it's still visible to the eye so it has that strobe effect to it that is kind of annoying. If it's over 20,000 hertz, it, you can't see it, but this controller can't do it, so it does flash a bit in medium and low. The XML2 LEDs by Cree are actually a new LED that's built on the old XML LED. And the new one is just a little bit better, 20% more lumen output, more lumens per watt, and double the lumens per dollar of the original. So it's a little cheaper, I guess. But they figured out a way to make it a little more efficient, put out more lumens for the same amount of energy. And that's the new and improved XML2. 
So the theoretical light output, maximum light output is 1052 lumens per 10 watts. So if there's seven in here and it's maxed out, then it should be around 7,000 lumens. It shouldn't be more than 1,000 lumens per LED unless you're overdriving the LEDs and I don't think that's the case. If you want to know a little more about the XML LED, just Google for Cree XML or XML2. The 2 is exactly the same size, it's just a more efficient and a little bit more light output than this one. But as you can see from this dimension diagram, they are both exactly the same dimensions. That's so that the manufacturers can replace the old version with the new version and get better efficiency and more light output and they don't have to change the machines any. One very important factor in LED life and lumen maintenance is that it has a good way to get the heat away from the LED. So it's a good idea to take this thing apart and put a bunch of good quality thermal grease in there on both the outside of that ring and the mating surfaces of this and that ring. That'll get all the heat away from the LEDs and make the flashlight last a lot longer. So overall this flashlight's built with very good quality. This nice aluminum ring at the front. Thick glass lens so you can get all your light out of there. Good silicone seal o-ring that keeps the water out of the front. This is a nice thick aluminum reflector. Very shiny so you get all your light and push it out the front. Good aluminum body good ring there you just need to put in a lot of thermal paste so that you can get the heat out transfer it away from the LEDs onto the body you've got a nice body here with heat sink uh, fins so you can get the heat away the switch that needs to be siliconed in should last a while this is a pretty good LED driver it's got high medium and low and it has a hidden strobe function which you can access by holding down the button for three seconds the aluminum button is pretty good as well you can add some grease to that to make it work a little better. The body itself is pretty strong and it's got good silicone o-rings as well. And the bottom plate and springs seem to be good quality and they won't wear out anytime soon. And the end cap is made of solid aluminum which doesn't appear to flex at all. So let's put this thing back together and test it out. So I'll quickly show you a comparison between the Cree Q5 1XML and the 7XML2 LEDs. This will give you a comparison of how bright it actually is. Instead of just pointing it out in the backyard and having the camera not really show you what it's going to be. And here's 7 times that. So as you can see, the Q5 looks pretty pathetic, the XML, single XML looks pretty bright, but the 70 watt XML 2s is definitely much brighter. And you can actually feel heat coming off the front of that. These ones, you can't feel anything. So as you see here, you get much more light from the 70 watt XML 2 LED flashlight, enough power to actually melt the foam and these ones it'll produce much heat so so if you want to see the foam melting here I use my polarized lens and maybe we can see it happen So as you can see it produces quite a bit of heat from this light and it melts the foam pretty quickly there. And this is in real time, I haven't sped this up at all. As you can see, you can move along slowly. Melt it away.
So be very careful with this light. There's a lot of power in it. Let's take it out to the backyard and test out its distribution. See how it works in the field. So we're at the farm and as you can see it's quite dark out there. Uh, it's not much light. This is a Canon SX40HS so it's actually a very high sensitivity camera so it picks up quite a bit of light but it's still so dark you can't see it. With this flashlight you can light up about 200 yards away. Not too much, but... You can't really see through the camera that you can light up 200 yards away, but your eyes can definitely see out to that point. So if there is an object out there, you can definitely spot it with this. You can tell from the distribution that it's quite focused, but it's not super narrow, so I call it a narrow wide beam. As you can see here, it lights up the entire backyard of the neighbor's house quite easily, both sides. Uh, it lights up the trees, so if there's anything in the trees you want to see, you can definitely spot that. It's a pretty good distribution on the flashlight. I'm pretty happy with it. I wouldn't change it any wider or narrower. I just keep it as it is, because it lights up everything quite easily. But it has a lot of light on the outsides as well, so that you can have light to acquire your target if you need to.